Hmm, have you ever felt lonely? Well, fear no more because physics brings you something that will be with you forever. That's right, my friend. And this is something that is closer to you than what you would expect. And no, I'm not talking about the deadline of that homework, but about neutrinos and the solar neutrino problem. Look at your thumbnail for one moment. 65 millions of neutrinos are passing through it every single second. But wait, 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 what on earth are they? Well, neutrinos are elementary particles. This means that you cannot divide them into smaller pieces. They are also electrically neutral, which means that they don't have an electric charge. They are very light and super fast, to the point that scientists thought for some time that they were massless and that they could travel at the speed of light. But this was completely wrong. They also hardly interact with anything. What can I say, they are very shy particles. Let's now take a quick look to the standard model of elementary particles. Here are our interesting friends, the neutrinos. But hey, there are three of them. Exactly, there are three types of neutrinos. The muon neutrino, the electron neutrino, and the tau neutrino. Hmm, but there is something peculiar about them and their masses, which brings us to the big mystery that scientists try to solve for centuries until one day they did. Let's go back to 1964 when scientists were investigating how the sun produces light. During the first half of the 20th century, scientists became convinced that the sun shines by converting deep in its interior four hydrogen nuclei into a helium nucleus two anti-electrons, and two tiny and mysterious particles, the neutrinos. According to this theory, every time the fusion reaction occurs, in order to compensate for the decrease in mass, a lot of energy is released in the sun that ultimately reaches the Earth as sunlight. As we mentioned, there are three known types of neutrinos. Nuclear fusion in the sun produces only electron neutrinos. Because they interact so rarely, these neutrinos escape easily from the sun and bring direct information about the solar fusion reactions to us on Earth. However, it wasn't until 1964 that some scientists came up with an experiment to test whether converting hydrogen nuclei to helium nuclei in the sun was indeed the source of sunlight. Using a detailed computer model of the sun, Scientists were able to predict the number of electron neutrinos produced in the nuclear fusion in the solar interior. However, when they decided to test this experimentally, oh my god, they realized that there was a big discrepancy between the predicted number of Earth-bound neutrinos produced in the Sun and the number of neutrinos that actually reached the Earth. We were missing about two-thirds! Where the heck had they gone? And this, ladies and gentlemen, is how the solar neutrino problem was born. So, this should mean that the sun does not shine by converting, deep in its interior, hydrogen into helium, right? Because electrons cannot just simply disappear, right? Wrong. Think about it this way. Look at these two tuning forks. I have missed one of them. Now, let me show you a trick that only waves can do. Can you hear that? Can you hear that wah, wah, wah? That coming and going of the sound? This oscillation happens because the sound waves of the two tuning forks interfere with each other. And something like this happens with their sneaky little particles, the neutrinos, when they travel freely through space. Let's take a look at the sun. We know that in the sun, electron neutrinos are produced. So that is why scientists measured here on Earth the number of electron neutrinos arriving in a set amount of time. But something strange happened next. To the detector, the neutrinos seem to disappear and come back again and disappear and come back again, ultimately giving a big discrepancy between the number of predicted Earth-bound neutrinos produced in the sun and the number of neutrinos detected here on Earth. So. Where are our missing neutrinos? Well, they were always there! 
It was just that they were turning into another flavor of neutrino that the detector could not taste. So to the detector, they seemed to just disappear, to be coming and going. For neutrinos, the origin of this strange wave-like behavior is a quantum mechanical process called neutrino oscillation. And that, my friends, is what clears up the mystery. So, as we have seen, neutrinos are wonderful yet mysterious particles. Over the course of your lifetime, about a trillion of neutrinos will have cursed through your body. So, as long as neutrinos exist, you will never be alone.